Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 16 to 20 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2019. If you're preparing for the Junior Maths Challenge, also take my free online course, uh, Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge. In that course, you can practice real questions from recent Junior Maths Challenge papers. Every question has a video hint as well as a full video solution, and there are no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. Uh, sign up in the link below, no payment details required or, not, or anything like that, totally free of charge, so have a look at that now. There is also an upgrade course called Go for Gold in Math Challenges, and in that course you can learn about all of the techniques you need for the Math Challenges and practice on loads of original practice problems that I've made up there as well. But you can have a go at the free course first, it's a big course and it's very substantial and it'll really help you prepare uh, for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I really hope that I'll see you over there. So in this question we're looking for three two-digit numbers, one's prime, one's triangular and one's square, using three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So uh, firstly let's just think about the square numbers, that's probably the easiest place to start here. The two-digit square numbers, the first one is 16 which is 4 squared, then 25, 36, 49, 64 and 81. The next one's 100 which is three digits so we don't need to go any further. Should be able to write these down pretty quickly for the maths challenge hopefully. And notice we're actually not allowed to use 1, 2 or 9. So actually 16, 25, uh, 49 and 81 can't be the square number. So already we see there's only two options for the square number 36 and 64. Now, for the triangular numbers, well firstly you need to remember what they are. So the triangular numbers we for, can sort of form triangles like this. So I do either 1 for the first one, or here it's 1, 2, 3. And then the next triangle I add 3 dots, so I get 6. And then I add 4 dots and I get 10. So if you like to go from uh, one triangular number to the next here, I start at 0, I add 1, and then I add 2, and then I add 3, and I add 4, etc. Right, so the next one is... Uh, so the first two digit one is uh, 10 and then the next one is 15 then I plus 6 to get 21 plus 7 to get 28 plus 8 to get 36 plus 9 to get 45 plus 10 to get 55 11 to get 66 12 to get 78 13 to get 91 and then that would take us over 100 but again I can't use 1, 2 or 9 so I can't actually have uh, any of these and I can't repeat a digit I've only got one of each so I can't have 55 or 66 so we've only got three options uh, here now so let's just think about these choices um, a bit more carefully then so firstly if I think about what the square number is it's either 36 or 64 now if I use uh, 36 for the square number for the triangular one, I obviously can't use 36 anymore, so I can only do 45 or 78. If I use 64 for the square number, I've used the 6 and the 4, so I actually can't use 36 or 45. Um, it'd have to be, it would have to be 78. Okay. Now think about what's left. So 36 and 45, I've used 3, 4, 5, 6, so I've only got 7 and 8 left. So it would have to be either 78 or 87. 78 is even, is obviously not prime, uh, 87 is a multiple of 3, um, you can check that very quickly with the digit sum test, 8 plus 7 is 15, that's a multiple of 3, so this is a multiple of 3, so none of those give us primes, if I use 78 here I've got 45 which is obviously a multiple of 5, or 54 which is even, so they're not prime, uh, if I do 64 and 78 I've got 35 which is a multiple of 5 and not prime, or 53 and I've actually exhausted all the possibilities now so this is the only option and uh, the answer is C 53. Notice here the nature of the question is there must only be one answer so if you found a correct combination before you exhausted all the, all the possibilities and you're sure it's correct you don't need to check all of the other ones here as it happens here it was the last one that I checked that was the right one um, so I have uh, checked all the other options as well but it wasn't necessary if I'd looked at 64 before I looked at 36 and found it, I could have stopped there. So I'm going to do this question twice, and I'll show you why. Um, there's an easy simplification you can make here, 
which is because we're just dealing with ratios and the comparisons between these shapes, it doesn't matter how long the rectangle is, as long as I get the proportions right. So I've got a rectangle that's three times as long as it is high, so why not take the easy choice and just say it's one and three? Um, right, so that means the area is just going to be three times one, which is three. And it says we've got this square that's 12 times the area uh, of the rectangle, 12 times three is 36. So I've got an air, a square that's area 36, so it must be six by six. Now the perimeter of the rectangle then is 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, which is 8, and the perimeter of the square is just 4 times 6, which is 24. So the ratio of the square to the rectangle is 24 uh, to 8, which is 3 to 1, and the answer here must be D, 3 to 1. Now, you see this question, although it's true for, in, you know, the, the, the same conclusion we'd come to for any rectangle that started in the ratio of 1 to 3, the way the question's set up here, you see, we don't actually have to do it for all of them. But I'll do it again in general because I know a lot of you will have done it this way. So let's just um, go back and you could do this in a way that would feel more general by using algebra. We could say, let's make it x and 3x. And now x could be anything and I've got a rectangle three times as long as it is high. The area would be 3x squared, 3x times x. If I multiply that area by 12, I get 36x squared, and now the side lengths of the square are 6x and 6x, um, because uh, 6x times 6x is 36x squared. So in this case, the perimeter of the rectangle will now be x plus 3x plus 3x plus x, which is 8x, and for this one it'll be 6x plus 6x plus 6x plus 6x, uh, and that's 24x. I could have just done 4 times 6x, obviously. So the ratio is 24x to 8x, and again, that simplifies down to 3 to 1. So I get the same answer here, and of course the answer is D. Uh, but um, you see how the working is exactly the same here, and so the x didn't really matter. I can just choose x equals 1 in this question and work it out. And if you're trying to be super expert in these problems and make sure you have time for the latest uh, questions and to go through them quickly, that's the sort of trick that can save you uh, a few seconds or a minute here and there and make all the difference. So this is a reasonably easy question if we think about it in the right way. Um, what you don't want to do here is to try and work out what all the cubes are between 1 and 8,000. Uh, you know, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, I could keep going and it would take me ages. But all I really need to know here is how many are there, so what's the largest one uh, that we get to before we get to 8,000? Before we get to 8,000. Um, now 8 is 2 cubed, and uh, 10 cubed is 1,000, so 20 times 20 times 20, 20 cubed is 8,000. And that means that there are 20 cubes between 1 and 8,000, and so the fraction is 20 out of 8,000 that we can simplify down nicely to 2 over 800, and then to 1 over 400, and so the answer is C, 1 over 400. So you're definitely an advantage in this question if you've done Sudoku puzzles before. It's a simplified version of it here. So every row, every column, and every set of six have to add have to contain the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So I'm not saying this is where they go, but like I look at this column, and that means it's missing a two, a five, and a six at the moment. So somehow it has to be like two, five, and six that way around, or some variant of that, right? And I know things like I can't put a five here because there's already a 5 in that row. Um, and to solve this one, what we do is actually just look at uh, the right-hand side here. Uh, so if I consider the uh, squares uh, here and here, um, they uh, have to be 2 and 4, because there isn't a 2 or a 4 in this uh, column yet but I can't put a 2 or a 4 here and here because there's already a 2 and a 4 in this box, right? So actually these two have to be a 2 and a 4 between them, and so also this one and this one have to be in a two, 2 and a 4 between them because there's not a 2 and a 4 in this column, and they've already been used in this box. So these have to be a 2 and a 4 between them as well. Um, but now, if you look along this uh, row here, there's already a 4, right? So actually it must be that this one is the 2 and this one is a 4, and then um, that means that this one can't be a 4 because there's now already a 4 in this box. 
So actually this one that was marked X must be a two. And so the answer is B two. So the one digit primes are two, three, five, and seven. So they're the only things we can make numbers out of. If I want to try and make the largest two digit prime from these, well, the largest possible number will be 77, but that's seven times 11, so it's not prime. Then 75 is a multiple of five. And so 73 is the first prime. Now if you weren't sure that it's prime, remember for a two digit prime, all we need to do is check whether it's a multiple of two, three, five, and seven, and if it's not, uh, then it will be prime if it's got two digits. That's because we only need to check prime numbers up to the square root of the number. Uh, seven squared is 49, and 11 squared is 121, so uh, all two-digit numbers are smaller than 11 squared. So uh, anyway, this is definitely not even. Um, it's not a multiple of three because it's digits seven plus three uh, add ten, and uh, so that's not a multiple of three. It's not a multiple of five because it doesn't end in a zero or a five, and it's three more than 70, so it's not a multiple of seven. So 73 is the largest two-digit prime here, uh, where both of its digits are prime. And for the smallest one, again, the smallest possible numbers will be 22, which is even, uh, so that's not prime, and then 23 uh, is prime, uh, which you might just know, or again, easy to check, it's not a multiple of uh, 2, 3, 2 or 3 here, or 5. Um, so the answer here is 73 minus 23. We just asked to subtract the smaller one from the larger one here, and so we get E50. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well. But there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.